doing this topic today on something that came up the other day and I just think it's very interesting and it's kind of the way I train and program with my clients is essentially not a bro style of training you know I follow a scientific and evidence-based approach to training and nutrition so I think of it all as a whole so training cardio nutrition are all things that I like to have a handle on I don't really do nutrition only type um, programming I guess I do do like training programs so I'll send you something that's kind of you know pretty much an eight week training program essentially I do do longer ones but I like to do it eight weeks and then like four weeks from there and add on training blocks and things like that so I kind of take a scientific approach to it and look at what are really the key factors in building muscle right um, although I don't have a degree in like a physical um, or like exercise science or anything like that specifically you know, I'm not certified in like the higher level um, personal training courses I do understand how it works and like I said I do a ton of research on it not as much as I do the nutrition aspect because I'm very very good with diet um, but I like to think my programs are pretty good because I have sound principles so the thing that came up at the gym was um, someone saying to do like full full reps all the way on hack squat ass to grass literally front squats also that was another thing not just the hack squats but the front squats ass to grass literally ass touching the ground and he said that if you didn't reach the very bottom that it was a wasted rep and you have to just do more and I totally cannot agree less that was the absolute like stupidest thing that I've ever heard and then he was like okay then you got to do half reps and then you got to do quarter reps to really burn out and just shock the muscle and I hate that term shock the muscle because it's so old school and you know you don't need to do that the, those guys you see in like the 80s and 90s that are doing this shit are on drugs first of all so they have like enhanced capabilities they're like fucking superhumans so you can't compare a nat natural athlete to someone like Ronnie Coleman or someone like Branch Warren they could train a lot harder than you and be able to recover and hit that body part again that later on that week or next week if they choose so I just thought that was extremely you know frustrating so it's kind of the title is a little misleading drop sets or supersets basically for best gains the answer is neither and let me explain why so when you do these things like drop sets and supersets and extended sets and all this it makes it very hard to track okay I'm not saying you necessarily have to come in with your little workbook your handy dandy notebook um, I like to track my workouts through Excel so, I mean, I've done the paper books, you know, I have a bunch over here underneath my table down there. I do have a notebook in my gym, or in my gym bag, in the event that I do have to write it down, or if I'm low on data. So, um, I do have one, and I like to look at old progress, but I track all of mine in Microsoft Excel on my phone. It's easy, it's fast, convenient, I could just upload it to my computer and send it to my coach. Um... But I have everything just at my fingertips. I can see exactly the way I did last week. And I can progress because without progression, you are not going to make gains. And you might think, okay, well, I'll just do 10 sets of 10. And then I'll just, you know, I could do 10 sets of 10. And I'll just do tons of sets after that. And then um, I'll just keep adding volume onto my chest, but there's a certain threshold where, first of all, you don't necessarily know exactly that you're doing more overall work or volume than last week or last month or last year. You know what I mean? So it helps to really just track each and every workout. And there's many things to consider when you're looking at a science-based approach. So like my programs where I have, I do the same workouts um, week to week, and then I make adjustments on a four week scale so I'll do training blocks and then I have adjusted um, progression schemes based on adding volume through reps or sets or what have you so there are many things to consider and the first of which I kind of spoke of is progression so progression is ultimately the most important thing when you're trying to build muscle so if you're not progressing you're not getting stronger you're not adding more volume into your workouts 
you're not going to grow. Okay. Volume has been proven time and time again. The more research that comes out, the more prominent it is that volume is the main determinant of muscle growth. Okay. The other things are important. Of course, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't do supersets or don't do drop sets. I'm saying it's not optimal. And yeah, it's good for a pump, of course, but the pump doesn't necessarily mean that you're gaining muscle. So when you're doing these drop sets and supersets, how do you really, how do you track your intensity? Okay, each set you might you might feel better one one workout to the next. You might feel stronger or do reps, kind of half rep or using your back a lot or, or certain things depending on the movement. So that's another thing to keep in mind is there's a lot of different variables kind of going on there. And, you know, another thing I would say, maybe even more important than overall progression is recovery. So when you're doing these crazy like drop sets, you know, bench press, you know, you're doing, uh, we'll just say for example, 405 bench press to 315 to 225 to 135 or for a standard person, 275 doing a drop set to 225 to 185 to 135 to like 95 and then the bar you're not going to be able to recover from that. And if you want to perform optimally, you're going to be hitting each body part two to three times a week. You know, frequency is very good for um, stimulating muscle protein synthesis and ultimately making gains. So if you are just zapping the shit out of your, your muscles, that's damaging your central nervous system. That's going to require time to recover, which is why you can't train to failure every single workout. And I see these bros and these bro trainers just saying, you know, failure, let's go, push it, push it, push it. And it's like, yeah, you have to know when to push and when to back off. And you can't go balls out every single workout. There were times where I was having trouble progressing on my deadlift because every single workout I was pushing it to failure. And you notice that, you know, I'll push and I'll do 95% of my one rep max. And yeah, I might get two reps, but that next set when I go to do it, I might get one rep, you know? or something that I'm supposed to do for three reps, I go for five reps the first time and I get five, but then the next sets I get like two and then I get like two. So, you know, you have to look at things in the big picture. You can't just say, okay, let's go balls out. And it's like, yeah, you could do one set, but you have to look at the overall volume for that workout and compare that to last week and then the week prior and then the week prior and really see that you're progressing because as long as you're progressing, the gains are gonna follow, that's inevitable. And pretty much just to sum the rest of this video up, the last key point that I want to address is, okay, we went over progression and recovery. Those are gonna be two things that are kind of impacted by these drop sets and supersets. Well, the last one I wanna say is injury because if you're doing, you know, drop sets on the leg press or squats or whatever, you're more likely to get injured in the bottom line. And if you are sitting in a hospital bed or you are going through rehab, you are not making gains. That is the opposite of making gains. That is catabolism, okay? So you don't wanna be injured. We wanna avoid injury. We wanna train safely. So just disregard that. You could use them once in a while. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm not saying that they're good. I'm just saying it is a tool and it can be utilized properly. But I would recommend it at the very end of a, of a, the very last set of a body part or the very last set of a workout. Um, specifically in the off season, definitely not contest prep. I wouldn't recommend that. And um, basically, the, the sci scientific based approach to training is pretty much just going to keep a maintenance on just most variables that these bro programs don't. So things like um, you know maintaining those variables like intensity, frequency, time under tension rest times, all these things are kind of held constant. So the only real thing we have to do is change your sets, reps, weight, etc. Those key things that are gonna determine volume. So I hope this helps somebody out. Hope this deters you from some of the bro ways of training. Um, you know, everybody has to start somewhere, so I just highly recommend you do, do some research, look up some videos from 3DMJ. They have a lot of good things on training. So be sure to like this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.